at last a very hot day which is why I look insane anyway not to complain I love this weather and we have been busy working on a project just after lunch I alluded to this a few vlogs ago about an idea I had had forming in my mind for a project uh, and our next big infrastructure project but I wanted to run it past Will and I have and we've both agreed that it's a good idea and we've made a brief start on it and so I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you what we've been up to. My location was a bit of a clue as is this stuff here the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice our uh, exciting pile of junk which came from here. So my next infrastructure project, as you've probably guessed by now, involves the snake shed. Let's go inside out of the sun. Essentially what we've done is removed the material from the snake shed that we that was all in here. We've removed it and split it into two piles. The piles of stuff we don't want, this will go to the tip. And the stuff we do want is the other side of the snake shed. This is stuff we don't want, but we've put it back in here because rain's predicted. And because this is all cardboard boxy stuff, we didn't want it to get mushed because we can't go to the tip just yet. Um, but as you can see, this is the space we're playing with. And our plan is to essentially put a series of shelves along these walls and the same here and then on this wall a, a section of smaller shelves say sort of lots and lots of smaller shelves and this will be wide and deep shelves and this is basically going to be secondary storage so as I was saying Will's got loads of tools that he wants to keep but hardly uses and we'll put those on these smaller shelves and I've got quite a lot of stuff for the garden and bits of pipe and hose and um, stuff for plumbing that I don't often use but I don't want to get rid of so that stuff will go on these wider deeper shelves and then on this side behind me we plan to put some clear perspex along this gap to help stop the rain coming in. And then on this wall, we'll um, stand our taller, sort of big size stuff that won't fit on the shelves. One of the reasons we've delayed doing this project is because we didn't want to disturb the snakes. There was a wooden crate here that the snakes lived underneath over winter, they hibernated. That's what all this straw was, there was plenty more. They sort of packed it into this corner to keep nice and warm over winter. And we like the red belly black snakes and we're not unwilling to encourage them. And we felt really bad about disturbing their hibernating place. However, I noticed this winter, spring, that the snakes didn't appear to have hibernated in here at all. Uh, I think that it's because because of all the rain, the floor in here gets very, very wet and I'm, I imagine that underneath there gets pretty wet too. And it's been like that for the last couple of years and I assume the snakes have given up on hibernating in here because of that. They seem to keep in their minds uh, a map of the property and they have like a series of places they like to go. So unfortunately there's a chance they'll try to hibernate in here again next winter. Um, but um, they'll, it, all that means is that they'll just refer to their mental map and they'll move on to the next place. They've clearly got other places they like to hibernate because I've seen them in all sorts of other crevices. And I saw them actually um, sort of leave hibernation and, and make for their summer hunting grounds. And they were over by the creek walk then. So they've got alternatives. I feel a bit sorry for them, but um, you know they, they had a fair shot at this place and now we've reclaimed it for us. Really, really helpful additional storage. We've made a start. 
you can't see it, but the floor's pretty slopey. So we made a start by packing um, some of our spare stones and bits and pieces down here um, in advance of getting just a little bit of gravel to help make this floor a bit nicer and level it off a bit. And then the last thing we did was take this door, which was previously hinged on this piece of wood to be the door to the orchard. But now that I've started taking down the fence, the door is pointless. So we just shifted it from that post to this post. And now it's the door to the storage shed. One other thing, um, you may not find this as exciting as I did, but when we moved the box, look what we found. I don't know if you can make that out. There's three of them. These are mummified rats. Now whether they just died of natural causes or if this is in fact the work of snakes, couldn't tell you. That's really cool though, isn't it? I just noticed we've got a new garden feature. Not something you see every day, even here. You're on a stroll. You need to be careful. You can strew you over, run you over. <laughs> really? It's a bit small. Having a scratch, huh? Try that one for size. I should add, I'm not on my property. <laughs> We're maybe on the cusp of starting to get koalas, or at least maybe even getting them back. Um, but I've not yet seen one. I suppose it doesn't mean they're not there. I'm not everywhere all of the time. But I've certainly never seen one. All right, don't don't walk into the road. I'm about to drive past you. I have just been mowing the lawns, and I'm currently on the mower because a problem's cropped up with it, which happens quite a lot here, and we're about to fix it. I need Will's help. Um, but I want to just quickly demonstrate to you what the problem is and then show you how we go about fixing it. So the only way to do that is unfortunately to turn this on and make quite a lot of noise. When I engaged the mower blades, it started to make this digga 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 noise because the blades are hitting against the metal that uh, protects the rider from the mower blades. This happens here a lot because whenever I go over stumps or stones, it seems to cause the metal to buckle somehow. And there are a lot of stumps and stones, most of which you can't see till you've gone over them. So we're going to fix this and I'll show you how. We've identified that the problem is this bit here. Um, so we need to pull this out. And the first thing we need to do is get it up onto a ramp, which is what Will's 
doing now. We don't have actual ramps, so um, Will's improvising one out of some of his collection of wood. Can you explain what you're about to do, Will? I am going to heat the metal up so it is easier to bend. No, but using what? Using a blowtorch. And tell me about this blowtorch and how it works, because I doubt a lot of people have ones like this. This is a proper blowtorch, which is much better than the silly modern ones that use gas. Why? Um, I don't know, it's cooler. Um, you, it's filled with kerosene. Um, you can get ones that are filled with petrol, but they have a tendency to explode and kerosene is safer. The kerosene gets vaporised as it goes through these pipes and then vaporised kerosene comes out here, causing a very hot flame. Um, however, you need to start by heating up the pipes, which means putting methylated spirits in this little hollow here, lighting it with a match that works. And when that methylated spirits has burned away, the blowtorch should be hot enough that I can start using it. To do that, I close the valve. I then will pump this, which will pressurize the kerosene and the pressurised kerosene will vaporise because the tube is hot and shoot out there, in theory. The reason we're doing this is because the, the metal that goes here underneath the mower blades is really, really, really hard and we've tried all sorts of techniques and we've found that heating it before bending it is the most effective and the fastest way of bending that metal back into shape. I reckon so. Okay, and turn this off. You just release the pressure and it stops. Shall we try? Here's the difference. 